Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, today we will talk about certain nuclear um, transformations um, which are called alpha or beta or gamma decay. Now this uh, lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens presented on website unizor.com. Um, I do suggest you to watch this lecture and any other lectures uh, of this course from the website um, because there are many reasons actually. First of all, the website contains a prerequisite course which is called Math for Teens. Secondly, every video lecture is supplemented on the website with a textual description which basically is like a textbook. I mean, piece of the textbook which is dedicated exactly to whatever I'm talking about during the lecture time. Then there are certain problems solved, there are exams if you want to take them, and you can take as many as, as you want, as many times as you want, the same exam until you're perfect. Um, now the site is completely free, there are no advertisement, so it's just uh, pure knowledge. I do suggest you to basically take a look at the website and take the whole course, basically. And obviously all the lectures are interrelated. <coughs> I'm using something which I have presented before in subsequent lectures, so there is definitely certain sequence, logical sequence, all these lectures are put together. Okay, now, back to business. Um, we are talking about certain nuclear transformations. Now, what transformations actually mean? It means that there was something in the nucleus, like certain number of protons and and neutrons, and then there is something else, for whatever reason. Now, um, in the beginning of 20th century, it's like about 1900 approximately, um, physicists such as uh, Rutherford and another guy, the French guy, Villar, um, were experimenting with radioactive material, like uranium or, or radium or something, and they have noticed that from this radioactive, what's the radioactivity actually mean from, from whatever they have observed? Well, it means that something is emitted. Now, that something was actually experimented with, and they have discovered that certain particles, actually, which were emitted, are positively charged. Certain particles are negatively charged. And then there are certain particles which are neutral to electricity. And they have decided to call them, at the time, alpha, beta, and gamma rays. Now, the word decay was probably introduced later, I'm not sure, but basically it means, again, the transformation, something like, something is going out from the nucleus, and that's why the word decay was actually used. So, alpha, beta, or gamma particles, alpha, beta, gamma rays, alpha, beta, gamma decay as a process, all these are terms which later on um, were researched and uh, through the experiments they have discovered that alpha, beta and gamma um, particles or rays if you wish, they are something which they have discovered from other uh, experiments as well. So let's start with alpha rays. So, alpha rays experimentally discovered as to be a combination of two protons plus two neutrons as a particle, which is basically the same as a nucleus of helium. So, there is a helium. It has four um, uh, particles inside the nucleus. Two of them are protons and two of them are neutrons, exactly what it is. So sometimes alpha particles are called helium nucleuses, nuclei. Okay, so now they are positive because there are two protons. Protons are positive, neutrons are negative. Okay, so whenever something like a big chunk of a, 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 a nucleus goes away, well, it's, it's rem what remains is a completely different nucleus. 
So let's just write down what happens in one particular case, for example. Let's say you have a plutonium. plutonium. That's a radioactive material. It has 94 protons and 239 is the total atomic mass. So total neutrons and protons is 239. Now, we take out two protons and two neutrons. So we have remaining 92 protons and 235 is the total number of protons and neutrons, minus 4, which is uranium. So it looks like plus alpha particle, which is helium 2,4. Uh, so that's what happens when um, plutonium, radioactive plutonium, emits one alpha particle. Now, when it emits, it transforms into uranium. Now, uranium by itself is also radioactive and it might actually undergo its own um, transformations by emitting alpha or beta or gamma particles. But that's beside the point. I just wanted to exemplify what is, in this particular case, alpha decay of plutonium into uranium and and uh, alpha particle. Now, <coughs> why it happens? Well, I can't really say why it happens, but it happens and certain um, elements have their own probability of happening. So, every um, uh, element, like plutonium or uranium, et etc., um, every atom actually of this element has certain probability of decaying during a certain period of time. And obviously the greater period of time, the greater probability of decaying is asymptotically obviously going to the probability of one. So um, it can be um, investigated probabilistically and there are certain calculations, not very complicated, but based on theory of probability, basically, which gives, again, based on this probability, probability of um, decaying during a certain amount of time as a function of time. But probability is a function of time. So based on this function, you can calculate what is an average so-called half-life. So what is half-life? Half-life is the average time required for any quantity of the element to decay half of it. So half of it will convert from whatever original element is into another element emitting alpha particles. Basically, after half-life, from a chunk of, let's say, one gram of plutonium, there will remain, on average, um, only half a gram of plutonium, and the rest will be something else. So this is called half-life. Now different elements have different half-life. Now something which has a very long period of half-life probably emits slower, and obviously during any period of time the amount of alpha particles emitted would be really low. But there are some other elements which are much faster decaying. So here in the unit of time, they emit more uh, alpha particles. So the more of this element is transformed into another element based on alpha decay. For example, there is an element called polonium. And uh, let me check, it was 84 protons and the total atomic mass is 210. So protons plus neutrons are 210. Now, it emits alpha particles converting into H2, two protons less, and four particles less, uh, atomic masses, 
O O A. And this is plumbum, lead, plus alpha particle. Now, this element has half life of 138 days. So approximately in 138 days from a gram of polonium will remain only half and the rest will be lead. Now, what about the alpha particles? Now, these are relatively heavy particles. I mean, it's two protons and two neutrons. These are the heaviest particles. So, it doesn't really travel fast or far in the air. Molecules of air would, would stop it. Uh, also, even a sheet of paper will be an obstacle for an alpha particle. It will not penetrate the sheet of paper. It will not penetrate the uh, skin. So if you have a source of alpha particle, uh, alpha particles near you, it will not penetrate your body, so it's safe. However, if it's inside your body, it will definitely bombard with alpha particles tissue around that place and it will destroy it slowly, but again, considering 138 days is half-life, if you have consumed something, it will relatively fast, like in 2-3 weeks, it will be already felt as a damage done to your body. And that's what happened with um, poisoning of Russian spy Alexander Litvinenko. He actually was somehow given polonium he was consumed it with a tea or something, I don't remember. So it was inside his body. And as it is inside the body, it starts basically destroying the tissue around it, and he died in whatever amount of relatively short amount of time. And nothing can be done about it, because you cannot really extract it. It's already inside the whole body in the bloodstream. So that's about alpha particles. Now, let's talk about beta particles. So, beta particles are called those particles which are emitted and have negative electric charge. By the way, how do they find out that something has positive, something has negative electric charge? Well, they just put some electricity around it, some electric charge, and they saw um, on some screen maybe how the flow of these particles is deviated from the original straight line. So if they saw something like this, they saw that there is an electric charge, obviously. So if you have some positive electric charge near the flow of beta particles and it turns on some screen, you can probably detect these particles or a photo screen or whatever. So, now, it appears to be that beta particles are electrons, light electrons, much lighter than alpha particles, because electron is tiny relative to proton and neutron. I think it's about one to thousands of a proton. So you, if you have four particles, so it's one eight thousandths of alpha. So it's a very small, and that's why it travels a little further. But still, it's not really very damaging, because it's very light, actually, and it doesn't have uh, a lot of penetration ability. Something like uh, aluminum foil would stop it. Um, skin will not, but still, I don't think it's very dangerous. It probably will be completely slowed down. In any case, it's a not very dangerous radiation. Um, again, it's light and it can be um, uh, it can be stopped by um, foil, uh, aluminum foil. Now, but how come the electrons are basically going from the nucleus? There are no electrons in the nucleus. There are protons and neutrons, but not electrons. So, what is the beta decay? In this case, how can it happen? Can electrons which are surrounding atom just be, you know, flowing away? 
Well, sometimes it does happen, but you need some f external force for this, not by itself. If you have a completely neutral element, uh, atom actually of the element, electrons would not really, from whatever electrons are surrounding, electrons will not actually fly away, because the protons inside the nucleus hold them. I mean, that's exactly how atom is made. <coughs> so, what actually is happening is the following. One of the neutrons inside the nucleus is transformed into positive proton and negative electron. So that's what's happening. It does not change the total atomic mass because the total number of protons plus neutrons is exactly the same, but it releases one electron and it goes away basically. So, for example, here's what happens. For example, you have a carbon, but not a regular carbon, which has six protons and twelve uh, is the total number of protons and neutrons. Let's say it has 14, which is unstable um, isotope of carbon. Now, in this particular case, when you have this beta decay, it's converted into something which has seven protons now and the same 14 um, atomic mass. And that would be nitrogen, and electron would be emitted. So that's what happens. Okay, so this is the beta decay. So beta decay is conversion of a neutron into a proton and um, electron and electron can emit can be emitted from the nucleus now this is not really a complete reaction there is some other components here now the in this particular case the component is is called anti neutrino uh, it's a tiny particle which doesn't have a mass doesn't have an electric charge um, it, it, it's actually very hard to detect but in any case, I don't want to go into the smaller details of this because there are some energy released, etc. So we're not talking about this. These are probably much more specialized things. But the most important thing is this conversion. Neutron can spontaneously change into proton and electron. And electron gets released as beta uh, decay. Now, the third one is gamma gamma decay, gamma rays. Now these are rays which did not really have any <coughs> electric charge. And um, as a result of experiments, what they have discovered, the gamma rays are just um, uh, oscillations of electromagnetic field. This is electromagnetic oscillations of a very, very high frequency. So we don't see them, it's beyond the um, visible spectrum. It's much more frequent, frequently oscillating. Uh, so the wavelengths correspondingly much smaller than the wavelengths of visible light. But because it's a very high frequency, now you remember about duality between um, the particles and waves as far as electromagnetic oscillations are concerned. So whenever we are dealing with the more the higher frequency of oscillations of electromagnetic field, the more uh, properties of the particles it has. So basically it acts like a flow of um, lumps of energy, which is basically something which we called photons. So alpha rays are 
flows of photons. So during whatever the reaction nucleus of some um, atoms undergo, the result of um, this transformation is um, emitting of gamma radiation. Um, we have a lot of gamma radiation coming from, uh, from space. Um, and they are damaging, actually, because the higher frequency means that they are really having a very... Um, uh, their, their ability to penetrate is very, very high. Now, I was talking about uh, penetration of alpha uh, particles, and you can just stop it with a sheet of paper. You can stop beta particles electrons with uh, aluminum foil, let's say. Now, the gamma rays to be stopped, they need a good thick layer of lead. And lead, you know, is a very heavy metal. Uh, it's very difficult to penetrate it with a particle or, or, or oscillations of uh, electromagnetic field. So, um, that's why in reactors, for example, um, the power plants, uh, nuclear power plants, they have a lot of protection, including a lot of lead they're using in many different purposes for many different reasons. So that is about this um, gamma rays. Now, they are used, actually, for some useful purpose, not only for protection against um, something. Um, they can be used for, for example, oil exploration, because they have this penetration um, characteristic. They can penetrate the Earth, and based on certain... Uh, I, I'm not really sure about what kind of devices, but something which get, can be sensed um, about whatever the way how they go through the earth and based on that they make some decisions about whether there is oil or, or gas or not. Um, cancer treatment also might be <coughs> radiation. Uh, cancer treatment also involves um, gamma rays or diagnostics of something like cancer. So in, in medicine it, it, it's used. But obviously these are supposed to be relatively weak and uh, well obviously whatever whoever is using should know really what he is doing and um, based on experiments etc people come up with certain dosages which which can be used for medical purposes or exploration purposes or something like this but again the gamma rays are dangerous <coughs> and uh, must be properly handled with Alpha is no big deal, beta probably also, but gamma rays are very dangerous. And obviously they can destroy the human body if, um, if, ex if, if the body is exposed. Um, many um, physicists of early 20th century who were dealing with radioactive materials, they did not really know about the gamma rays um, and they did not really protect themselves properly, and some of them really died of radiation. I think um, Maria Curie, the famous uh, physicist, she was working in, in, in France, but she was originally from Poland. Um, I, I think she died of uh, uh, something like lymphoma or something like this, I'm not really sure but definitely r related to radiation, because she was basically handling uranium with bare hands. And that, that's definitely... She didn't know about how dangerous it might be. Anyway, my lecture today was about alpha, beta, and gamma, rays, decays, and particles, and uh, why I have decided to dedicate the lecture, the whole lecture, to this, because it's very important for what I will be talking about next, and that will be something 
like splitting the atom, releasing energy, atomic bomb. So that would be next lecture. So thanks very much. I do suggest you to read notes for this lecture. It's on unizor.com. Other than that, good luck. <laughs>